With 58 hours of printing, I don't even know how much time spent in CAD. All trying to code the inverse kinematics. It still can't even walk. I uh, might be in over my head. So I've just watched back the previous video and I got so much to do. Because all I did was make a leg and then make it wiggle about. So if I want to finish this project before I go back to uni, there's a few things I need to do. So I need to design the body, assemble everything, stop the feet from yeah, make it stand. I do that by calculating. Start to think about walking. If I do all this, it should be fine. But Adam from the previous video, the uh, software I'll, I'll deal with later and it will probably be more work than actually building it, but that's a problem for future me. You're stupid and I don't like you. So first on my uh, slightly serial killer looking list is CAD. Now, as you can see, I've already gotten started designing the body. I also had to learn Fusion 360 and import all my old models into that because halfway through my SolidWorks license ran out. Now my design process for a part usually follows the same steps. Getting the dimensions of any parts it needs to fit to, designing the thing best I can, and then putting it into a final assembly. Now after this Designing all the parts, the next step was to print everything. And there was a lot of printing. So far, I think I'm at about 58 hours total of printing, which I know is nothing compared to the people who print whole Iron Man suits and things like that, but it's a lot to me. But this is the final part, so once we've got this printed, we can just put the whole thing together. I didn't explain that at the time, but what you can see me doing here is setting all the servos to 90 degrees before I attach them to the robot so that they'll be in their default positions. And it's done. It looks like a robot. Kind of spot ripoff, but that's fine. More importantly, it's about this big, which from my last video was obviously one of my most important criteria, which just shows you how well thought out this whole thing's been. One thing I have noticed though is that these feet are going to be way too slippy on any sort of smooth surface, so if I don't want it to only be able to walk on sandpaper I should probably do something about that. And here's what I came up with, so what I've done is wrap the feet with a rubber grip we get for tennis rackets, which should hopefully stop the thing from slipping all over the place. Now would probably also be a good time to weigh it, so it comes in along with the battery I'm going to be using at around about 1.2 kilograms, way under the 2.2 kilogram target I set in the last video. Before I can make it walk, I need to code the inverse kinematics for the foot positions. What's inverse kinematics you say? Well, according to Wikipedia, inverse kinematics is a mathematical process of calculating the variable joint parameters need to place the end of the kinematic chain. But simply it's being able to specify the end position of the joint and then calculating the joint angles backwards from that. Hopefully, all it should take is a quick coding montage and then this bad boy will be able to stand up. And there we go, that uh, wasn't too bad, um, especially for someone as smooth-brained as I am. I was trying to think of a way to show it off, and whenever you see Boston Dynamics release a robot, they always make it like twerk or something, so I'm going to make it dance. A few moments later... So that's all for this video. Now, in the next one, I'm going to try and make it walk. Um, but while you're waiting for that, go watch this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.